Well, the state of things isn't good, and I didn't even know if I was going to be up to making this video tonight, but we have to do another video, and this is because I don't want to do any videos this weekend, or at least not as many as I just don't want to do any, but yeah, the weather sucked. It's been like, what, three weeks since I'm to the pines now, so I'm kind of messed up from it all, but uh, got to talk about what's happening in this state, um, because the crime is out of control, and even Channel 12 has been covering it. Uh, and, uh, meanwhile, the governor's priority, this is the governor's priority, monkeypox. Now she signed another executive order declaring a state of emergency. I mean, we're the only state in the whole country to do this. We have a state of emergency with crime. This woman is just, she's just out of control. She's just out of control, this governor. She's just out of control, I'm telling you. What is wrong with people in this state? Why did they pick her in the primary? It's so obvious. She's destroying this state. Let's talk about the crime going on. Oh, and before we even get to the crime, we're going to talk about them winning again because they won big again today on Wall Street. Yep. They won huge, and it's a stocks rally for a third day cap it to cap a winning week major averages post best month since 2020 so they're doing better than ever meanwhile the economy is entering a recession but again they're in their own little world down there you gotta remember they're in their own little elysium that's what it is elysium yeah, that's what life is becoming like the movie elysium you should see the movie elysium you know we'll talk about what that movie's about at the end of the video but, uh, yeah, let's talk about all the crime going on because, uh, and the first thing that I'm going to see already, it's not on the front page. I have to go back. But News 12 actually did cover some crime today. Go figure that one day I don't go out and watch News 12. I actually did feel like covering some crime. Are they already, yeah, here we go. So this is what we have to deal with in the middle of the island, folks. Doors were broken into early this morning in a busy town in Nassau County, and now police are looking for answers tonight. News 12's crime reporter Krista McNally is live in Westbury where it happened, and she's got the latest. Krista. Good evening. We're in front of Toscana's Pizzeria, where you can see their window is completely destroyed. It's gone after a slew of break-ins here on Post Avenue last night. And there is no word right now on if it was one person or several thieves. And you can see it's a ghost town, too. Oh, so upset. You have no idea. Jenny Dautai got a call early this morning that her business was one of four hit by burglars in the Westbury downtown. They took our money from registers. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. This surveillance video shows the moment the thieves took her register, along with everything in it. And now it will take weeks and a lot of money to replace it. The pizzeria, as well as the Aztec Deli, Maria's Pastry Shop, and Putacana Dominican Grill were all broken into. It's not right. It's not fair. I work seven days a week. I'm a mother. I have three children. I'm here at 10 o'clock in the morning. So literally 11 o'clock at night, seven days a week. Other businesses and people who live nearby are extremely concerned. I've been in business 35 years. I've been here since 2000. I've never seen anything like this before. Walking into through my laundry and I just saw the, uh, I saw the broken glass all over the place. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to think. Police are investigating these incidents and there is no word yet on if any arrests have been made at this time. You really got to be very heartless to actually do something like this, not just to me, but to Punta Cana, my neighbor and the other store down the block. I just think it's ridiculous. Now, the pizzeria will have their window replaced by Monday. Basically, all the businesses around here are just trying to clean up as much as they can to get things back to normal for their customers. Joe? Yeah, Krista, do we know how many people the cops are possibly looking for tonight? So we don't. Cops have not said if it's one or more people. You could see one person in the surveillance video, and at this point, that's the only image of anyone we've seen. So, so this is what you deal with in the middle of the island, and these businesses can't afford, uh, you know, this. And that's why we're seeing businesses close in the middle of the island. Not only do they have to deal with the fact that their customer volume is down, uh, no thanks again to the Long Island Railroad shutting down the main line again this weekend, but also for, uh, you know, the crime. Uh, and I have a feeling that this is going to impact more businesses and force them to close again, all right? So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad they actually did that. They actually covered some crime today, which was good. And I'm glad they did. I'm glad they actually did cover some crime. 
uh, uh, you know, I think that's a good thing that they actually covered some crime. Now we have this crime going on, and they also covered this for three minutes. Uh, Holbrook resident. Now, now, you know, News 12 actually did a good job covering some crime today. Uh, but again, Holbrook, that's sort of like the middle of the island. This is like the middle of the island. All the crime, all the problems in the middle of the island, we're getting the brunt of it. Doug and McKenzie have the night off new for you right now on News 12. We have exclusive new video for you of suspected thieves in action. You can see them trying to get into parked cars in a quiet Suffolk County community. News 12's Kevin Vesey is live in Holbrook tonight. And Kevin, I understand residents are telling you these attempted thefts have been happening more often lately. Yeah, that's right, Joe. You know, people who live in this small neighborhood right next to Nichols Road tell me this area really has become a hotbed for this kind of activity. In fact, the owners of this home behind me say someone walked up their driveway in the middle of the night last night, tried to get into this Jeep right over here. And so many other people are telling me the same exact thing happened to them either last night or very recently. And it has so many people here on high alert right now. I don't feel safe, to be honest with you. Deanna Salentino says she couldn't believe her eyes after watching this security video, which shows a man in her driveway at around 2.30 this morning. He tried breaking into her SUV, but was scared away when motion sensor lights flicked on. You know, I live in a nice area, and you don't think things like this would happen. Your home is supposed to be your safe place. She's one of several people in this Holbrook neighborhood who say they were targeted by thieves looking for valuables inside parked cars. These pictures show someone trying to get into a pickup truck at a different house, this time in broad daylight. He's wearing a mask in some of the shots, but his face is exposed broad in daylight. others. It's scary. Kathy Lynch says crooks tried getting into her cars a few nights ago, and she says the same thing happened to her next door neighbor. They have no problem walking up into someone's driveway, trying doors probably as well as car doors. So it's they're pretty brazen about it. As News 12 has reported, vehicle break-ins and thefts have been surging this year, mostly in cars that have been left unlocked. Deanna and her husband Michael say they'll be extra vigilant from now on. When you're a parent, you go into panic mode, you know, because you're supposed to be safe, you know, and it's, yeah, it only, you know, happened in the driveway, but what happens if they, you know, decided to come inside the house while we're sleeping, you know, it's, it's nerve-wracking. And there's a neighborhood watch right now in this community that's keeping an eye out. People are also sharing their ring doorbell videos online as a way to warn one another. And Joe, police did respond to this house earlier doing? today, but so far no arrests have been made. No arrests. All right, Kevin, it sounds like, though, everyone is talking to each other, so that might help uh, put an end to this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, communication is key, and so many people were either hit or there was an attempt on their uh, cars. So, yeah, people are certainly getting the word out and uh, telling us as well. Hopefully that will deter future crime. And here's the thing. If those people, the people doing this are arrested, they're going to be let out. So there's an incentive to come to New York and continue to do this kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's out of control. It's just it's just it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Our quality of life in the middle of the island continues to just fall down to the toilet. Uh, meanwhile, they also covered this. Babylon doubles the price Babylon, of the parking price of in park the village. The snobs are raising the price of parking. Uh, so car is doubling now. News 12's Danielle Campbell has more on the change. That's right. That's right. It really hurts us all. Let's put it that way. Chet Kalwaski, who is from North Babylon, loves to grab lunch in Babylon Village, but he stopped short in his tracks when he heard the price of parking. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's what they want in Babylon. If you're not a certain demographic, you're not welcome. That's the message they're sending. Is about to go up. Right now, 25 cents gets you two hours of parking on the street. Starting Monday, it will cost 50 cents for two hours. I think, uh, you know, the businesses that are here suffer the most. Village officials say it's the first increase since 1999. Mariana Rufo, who was meeting her cousins for a bite, had this to say. Everything is going up, 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 except our paychecks. But Brian Kunz, who lives in the yeah, village, felt the differently. 50 cents for two hours is a steal. 
when everywhere else they're paying twice that. Jim Wickert, who owns Unique Golf, which has been located on Main Street for almost see the three decades, broken in there. had this opinion. We need to here to protect the businesses. Wicker told us the price of parking is reasonable. It keeps someone from parking their car in front of a store all day. We're here to make money. We spoke with Village Mayor Mary Adams, who told us the village is still recovering financially from the pandemic. That extra quarter is going to help replenish the funds that we lost here. Mayor Adams says there are about 500 of these meters in the village, and they hope to make about $100,000 with that extra quarter. Adam says that would bring in a total of seven to eight hundred thousand dollars a year, and some of the money will go towards creating a Saturday night code enforcement shift. We could complain, but really, it's not that bad. In Babylon, Danielle Campbell, News Keen. Twelve, Long Island. It's all peachy keen. Well, most of us would give our right hand to live in Babylon Village. All right, <laughs> all right. Maybe I'm being a little a little exaggerating there, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's an exclusive enclave. Uh, they get the best, they get the good quality of life, but well, we get all the crime. Uh, you know, their kind continue to prosper on Wall Street and finance, while the rest of us uh, are barely making ends meet. It's unbelievable. Uh, it really is, but it kind of just goes to show you what's happening. Uh, it really does. Um, now, we can also look in this as well. We had an armed robbery in Miller Place. They didn't cover that. Armed robbery. Uh, it was a wa late night watch sale. Victim, so it was uh, 11:45. That is never a good idea to do that. To meet a stranger uh, to sell something. Um, never a good idea. Never a good idea to do that. So it's. Uh, but again, it's not on the South Shore. So go. Everything's. Uh, every the South Shore avoids most of it. All right. Huntington Stop and Shop. Somebody stole from a Huntington Stop and Shop. Uh, so, you know, all this stuff going on. You could also look at the Nassau County Police thing, see if there's anything new on there. Uh, no, nothing new on there. But the governor, she's more concerned with monkeypox. No, we have a state of emergency with crime in this state. You should call the legislature back into session to fix this bail reform. That's the real state of emergency, governor. She is the worst governor in th that I've ever seen in my life, this woman. How does somebody get in to office who absolutely has no idea how to run a state? Well, she only, the only thing she's good at is running the state into the ground. That she's good at doing. It's unbelievable. It really is. But as I look at the city news, there's been some more crime here as well. You know what? Migrants being dumped in the city? Yeah. Inaccurate documents. That's 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 the, the news for I team broke the story. A surge of migrants on weeks long treks from South America now flooding into New York City. And we're going to play this, too, because this is all part of the plan. Hochul's in on it there. This is part of redlining the community, redlining a community, putting all those illegals in there. I mean, they're doing it here in the Neola. I see it. I see the signs. You know, it's just another ha a way to drive the middle class out of New York. Sleeping on streets, office floors, and overwhelming city shelters. And the problem is so much worse. News 4 government affairs reporter Melissa Russo has uncovered new information, raising even more concerns. And she has details on what the city plans to do about it. <laughs> Worlds away from her home in Venezuela. Sick Notice that Hoko has nothing to say about this. Six-year-old Cassandra Lisa Urbaez says she's happy, finally, to be in a shelter with an actual bed. And no, it is better not to be in the street. The Urbaez family says they lived on the street their first days here in New York after some confusion about where they were supposed to go when they got here. Aquí vamos pasando la última. Montaña. After a long and harrowing journey through the jungle with their children and their dog, they crossed the border in Texas. Chris Mon Urbaez tells us U.S. Homeland Security officials encouraged him to go to New York, handing them papers with a destination in Manhattan. Why, why are we getting all this? Why, why, are, why are we getting, we are full, we have no more room. Why aren't they being sent to Texas or Arizona? No, it's got to be New York. This is just another example of that the state is being ruined. 409 West 40th Street. 
A family came knocking at our door, 409. Maria Vergara says she felt terrible she had to tell this family of four she was unable to house Chrisman or his children. We're a woman's shelter. We were not going to split up. We just went back to the streets. Chrisman and his family say they remained on the streets until they met a man who directed them to the entry point of the city homeless shelter system in the Bronx, where they stayed sleeping on benches and the floor with dozens of other families until they received a shelter placement in Brooklyn. They're just kind of being dropped off in random locations. According to caseworkers with Catholic Charities here, the Urbias family is one of hundreds of migrant families being sent on a wild goose chase for... And that is horrible. I mean, that is horrible. And this is all on the president, right, and the governor, all right? This is all on the president and the governor, right? They're, they thought that they would get some help, and they're just being... I don't know how they came here, if they came here legally or illegally, but regardless of the fact, um, this is not accept. you know, it's just not acceptable. For shelter in New York after receiving arbitrary destinations from federal officials down at the border. Destinations like 1011 First Avenue, which is the headquarters for Catholic charities here, but not a shelter. Keep in mind, this is an office that houses our human resources department, our finance department, payroll. Other families were sent to 80 Maiden Lane, another office building with no services like food or beds. Where these families should be going is the entry point to the city's homeless shelter system on East 151st Street in the Bronx. So I think it's just kind of adding to the already very, you know, difficult journey that so many of these individuals and families have been on. To go to a destination that is very clearly not the right place. There are so many families that have to endure so much on the way to then get here and still have a hard time. But the I-team has learned the federal government is not just sending migrants to the wrong addresses. Now they're sending their mail there, too. 1011 First Avenue, New York, New York. 1011 First Avenue, New York, New York. 1011 First Avenue, New York, New York. Immigration lawyer Marianne Therapel at Catholic Charities showed us stacks of important mail from immigration sent to her office, telling the asylum seekers when and where to appear in court. The letters say if they don't show up, they could be taken into custody or even removed from the country. It's absolutely unacceptable. The fact that over 200 people have had their... All right, so these people are trying to come here legally, I guess, and uh, this is just unbelievable. Uh, what, what is going on in this go go country of ours? It's unbelievable. Hearing notices listed as a Catholic Charities agency. The hearings are taking place as soon as next week, and it's not clear where the families are. New York City Social Services Commissioner Gary Jenkins tells me he was unaware of the problem. I have not seen the, the, the form that you're referencing, but we would definitely look into it and follow up um, to see if we can determine where um, the, 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 the notices are coming from so we can course correct. The commissioner confirms the city is planning to build a welcome center that could help clear up some of the confusion for families. He says they'll get the help they need from food to health care to enrollment in school. Chris Angeles and her brother, meanwhile, are praying they'll find a better life here after coming this far. I had a dream that I was still passing through the jungle. You know, it's a traumatic journey for these families with no guarantee they'll be able to stay here. A spokesperson for U.S. Customs and Border Patrol tells us they're now looking into this situation with the wrong addresses. And perhaps Natalie and David, they say they'll have some more information for us tomorrow to explain why these addresses are ending up on those forms. So you're saying this is basically when they go to get on the bus, when they cross yeah. the border, they're getting the wrong address on those sheets yeah, of paper. Yeah, they're just putting addresses. Maybe they're Googling mm -hmm. social service programs and just putting that on the form, but mm -hmm. they are not the right place to go and you would think that the city and the federal government could have that conversation mm -hmm. and straighten it out pretty easily. How long do you think to re resolve this? What 
Do you have any idea of a time frame? You know, the asylum process could take months or it could take years, but for now at least the families are really here to stay unless, of course, they miss a court date and get deported because they're not getting their mail. But you heard the city uh, social services commissioner saying that there's a new welcome center coming, so hopefully in a couple of weeks that might be able to help these families to sort of navigate some of the, the confusing uh, bureaucracy mm. here. Right. Well, you've been out front on this. Sounds like you're going to be listening for the federal government now to answer more yeah, of your questions. Yeah, tomorrow. So, we're hoping to get an answer from that. Uh, we look forward to that report. Well, the old man just ain't fit for the job, you know, so I'm saying. Yeah, Trump was way worse, but this is a real failure, um, you know. And why New York being singled out? That's why I think the governor is in on this. Why are they all being sent to New York? Right, so these are people seeking asylum, all right? And you got to remember, as we deal with the climate crisis, you got to remember the countries they're coming from are getting hotter and more humid uh, and, and more unlivable, all right? Um, we all need to share in helping. Uh, why is just New York City being singled out? And probably probably going to places like Mineola, too. And, and, and you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, they come here for a better life and they want to escape, but they're not going to have a... They're not going to be allowed to live the good life, obviously. That's only for a certain demographic. That's what uh, that's what this governor has to say. Um, you know, it, it's it's unbelievable what's happening in this world. So let's now go to uh, New Jersey. I guess we'll do that next. So let's do a New Jersey Shore hurricane news. Uh, not Jersey Shore hurricane. Jersey Shore run line. And I wanted to kind of bring up this story here. we got to find it here. Uh, here to show you how they deal with crime in New Jersey compared to New York. It's a pretty scary crime here. This guy here pled guilty to motel burglary, all right? So this happened in Tom's River, all right? Angel Ramirez of Tom's River pled guilty to burglary in rel rel in rel relative to an incident took place at the Pelican Inn in Suites on Route 37, all right? There was a disturbance, and they found a woman bleeding from her head. It's a very serious crime. Ramirez had broken the window of the victim's motel room with a baseball bat and then kicked the room open. He then entered the motel room and assaulted the victim and shattered her cell phone. She was arrested. He was arrested at the scene where he's been lodged at the jail since his apprehension. So unlike New York, there's a thing called the No Early Release Act, which means he must serve at least 85% of his term before being eligible for parole. So it's very good in New Jersey they have that. All right, We don't have such a thing here. All right. Uh, let's go to another one here. Shore man arrested for arson and robbery. Another person here arrested. Uh, this is Red Bank now, so it's a different county. This is Monmouth County. Uh, he he set a fire, uh, and then he was uh, he was lodged in, and he's lodged in jail. He hasn't gotten out. All right, all right. So another example. Uh, New Jersey they enforce the law there. All right, they don't let these dangerous people come. They're coming to New York because they know they can get away with the crime here. And the governor doesn't want to do anything to help us. But it's all part of the plan. As you know, New York, see, we Habitat for Humanity on Verrill's 21st home. Ridgeway Road in, uh, I don't know where that is. Uh, Ridgeway Home in uh, Ridgeway Avenue. I don't know where that is. Oh, Manchester. It's a very nice area. See, they uh, build Habitat for Humanity homes in nice areas in New Jersey, but in New York, they're always built in the bad ne in the bad neighborhoods. They we're not they never allowed to live. It's always Hempstead. If you, we can always go and look right now. You can see uh, Habitat for Humanity, Long Island, and I and I could just go put this in news here. All right, uh, let's see. Received Habitat Humidity, Habitat for Humanity. Let's see. Let's see where they'll show you where they, they build the houses here. Habitat to build, all right. I, I can't even find anything new, but uh, they're always long. They're always in uh, not so great areas like Roosevelt or Hempstead. Um, um, maybe I'll kind of put Nassau County. Uh, let's see. Nothing really comes up, so <laughs> all right, whatever. But you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, so, uh Oh, I mean, they, they really, uh, yeah, I don't know why. East Patchogue, all right. East Patchogue's not the best area either. So it, it just, it, it, the affordable housing on Long Island is not allowed in the more desirable areas of the island. It's always in the most dangerous areas of the island. Whereas in New Jersey, it's allowed everywhere. So that's that's the difference, obviously. And, you know, all that I read to you is all part of the plan to drive us out. New York is becoming a mini Elysium. Uh, and, you know, we're in the middle of the island. You just deal with all the crime. 
get to deal with all the problems. All the problems get put in the middle of the island communities. All right? Uh, while the South Shore and those lily white areas like Rockville Center, Lindbrook, and Merrick, Belmar, Wantar, Babylon, you know, they, all these areas here, they get to live the good life. Uh, their economy does great while we get to deal with the crime and the stores closing. And that's all part of the plan because by having less areas that are desirable left in New York, uh, it's going to drive up the price of those places. Uh, to, and those places are going to be so coveted and so hard to get into. Uh, let's just go look at apartments.com, for instance. And I'll show you. I'll just put Rockville Center in here, and you'll see what I mean here. Uh, you want to live in Rockville Center. Um, yeah. Look at that. I, I mean, starting at nearly $3,000. How are you going to get in there? I mean, I it's impossible. You know, uh, I mean, it it's ridiculous. It really is. Oh, here's an apartment for rent in Oceanside. Not sure if that's an a legal apartment or not. It might be. I'm not sure. But uh, Davison Avenue. I'm not sure where that is exactly. But uh, it's very coveted to get in here. Right? Very coveted. Right? And then we can go look at houses. So, you know, we can look at real estate and go, all right, let's go to Zillow. And look at Rockville Center, for instance, all right? Uh, and, again, it's very coveted here. You want to get into some of these houses. Let's see, Zillow, Rockville Center. You can take a look and see how much these houses cost. Look at that. Some of these are over a million bucks already. See, the average house, to get into these areas, it's going to cost, like, over a million dollars. It's just they're pricing us out. They're pricing us out uh, of New York. That's And then Hoku is part of that. That's what our plan is, uh, to force us out. So, last, as promised, we'll go and look at the movie Elysium. And let's we'll talk about what Elysium is. It's a movie. I actually saw it already. Uh, we'll go to all here. This is the movie, all right? Uh, uh, you know, here, here we go. Uh, uh, Elysium follows a man, uh, a, the very wealthy, in the year 2154, the very wealthy live on a man-made space station while the rest of the population resi resides on a ruined earth. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? The man takes on a mission that could potentially bring equali equality to the, the, the words. So, so they have two different worlds. And I suggest you watch that movie. You can maybe uh, rent it from the library or something. Uh, it's, it's a really good movie. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's all about uh, ha this is what's going on. The wealthy, the certain demographic people are in their enclaves. They're only for their own kind. We're not allowed there. All right? And that, that's what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's what's going on. Here's another thing here. In the year 2154, humanity is sharply divided between two classes of people. The ultra-rich live above a luxurious space station called Elysium, and the rest of live in a hard scrabble existence on Earth. This is the direction we are heading in, folks. So, um, especially in New York, but it's, it's, it's becoming more of a worldwide problem. Because, again, we're in a recession, and Wall Street is continuing to celebrate. Um, kind of shows you what we're up against. And that's why, and again, you have a governor that's obsessed with her power and distracting over the crime the rest of us deal with. So we're heading toward that kind of existence here, um, especially in New York. Fortunately, if you want to escape that, you can escape it. Um, you can, <laughs> obviously, if you go and shut up and go live in New Jersey or some other state that doesn't have uh, what's happening. But, of course, Long Island is my home. I don't want to move away. But, of course... If it gets to the point where I can't live any place safe, then obviously the choice is going to be pretty obvious what I'm going to have to do. And uh, we all know what that is. So um, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. And, uh, you know, I make these videos because I know, you know, you may not be a Republican. You may not have ever, ever voted for a Republican in your life. But if this woman is not defeated on Election Day, uh, New York will be ruined, except for certain except She will basically turn New York into a real-life version of Elysium. That's what this woman is going to do. I'm telling you that right now. So thank you for watching, and take care.